So this will be the last class with uh, new material. Uh, I had hoped to get a, a couple more things in by the end of the semester, but I just didn't get to them. There was just too much stuff. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to cover what I've added today and, uh, and talk about a couple of things that should be talked about. Do you remember there was a there was a, uh, an Egyptian room? I think it was like two yeah. classes ago. You go in this Jewish Egyptian room and you see the Egyptian stuff. Well, uh, that has a command in it that I didn't tell you about. That's already it's already built into it. Is if you hit the letter W or the letter Z, you'll be able to look down and look up. You'll be able to look in both directions. Okay, so you can look around. If you want to see what's on the ceiling. You just hit the Z and it'll show you what's on the ceiling or the W. I'm not sure which I have it, one of the two. So basically, what you have, you not only can move around the room, but you can look down or up, which is something that I didn't show you how to do. The reason why I didn't show you how to do it is because it's got a little trick to it. It's got a little bit of a problem with it. If you, uh, we haven't talked about this because it's kind of built into the system the way I set it up. When, when you say rotate, over the x, over the y, and over the z axis. What the object does is it rotates over the x first, and then rotates over its y, which is now in this direction, and then over the z, which is in this direction. So in other words, it rotates each one over its own axis, whatever it happens to be. And you can see what would happen is if you rotate over x and over y, one thing's going to happen. If you rotate over y and then over x, a different thing's going to happen. And you might think, well, you could just change the lines, change the x to the y and the lines in your program, but you can't. It doesn't make any difference what you do, because the program always goes x, y, z. It always does that. In other words, it always rotates over the x first, over the y second, and over the z third. The problem is, if you're the guy walking around the room, you're the camera, and you're walking around the room, so what you're doing is, as you turn this way, you're turning over the y, you're turning over the y, you're turning over the y, and then you want to turn over the x to look down or look up. Okay. The problem with that is the machine's going to confound you. It's going to do the X first, and then it's going to do all the Ys. So basically what happens is it ends up tilting the room weird. You wonder what the heck is going on. So what you have to do, the only way to compensate for that, in the old days they had a weird way of doing it, but I'll tell you what our way is now. What we do now is we hook the camera into an order that's Y, X, Z instead of X, Y, Z. It does, in other words, it does the Y first, and then it does the X. So in other words, what it'll do is it'll allow you to go around the room like this, and then when you say X, it'll do the proper X. It's done all the Ys in the proper position, then it just does the X. If we do it the other way, if we leave it the way this, the machine's all set up to do, it's going to cause you trouble. So in order to do that, though, you have to tell the camera to act differently than everything else in the whole. Everything else is acting X, Y, Z. Okay, when you set up your scene and everything like that, it's all X, Y, Z. The standard is called X, Y, Z. And by the way, this system was called Euler, E-U-L-E-R, because of the mathematician that, that wrote it. He wrote the system of going over this axis, over that axis, and over this axis. He invented that idea. So basically, uh, Euler has a problem, because if, you, if you're walking around the room, you don't want to follow the normal X, Y, Z. You want to follow the Y, X, Z. So here's what you have to do. You have to add a... Uh, you have to add an instruction that says, camera, don't follow the normal order. Follow this order. Now look, if you're not looking up and down, it won't make any difference. It won't be the same. It's only when you're going to look up and down because you're going to go over the x-axis. Otherwise, walking around only talks about walking around the y-axis. That's all you're doing is changing directions. But if you're going to have the camera go up and down, if you're going to have two keys, one to shoot it up and one to shoot it down, you can do that. Tell it move up and down. What you have to do is uh, add this instruction here, all right, about this instruction, which is called uh, camera dot. That's because the camera's being changed. Euler, this is the guy's name, by the way. That's built in. I can't do anything about that. Euler is his name. It's a Frenchy order. And this is capital O right here, order. And then what you do is, I don't think you give, give any data at all. Let me see if that's true. Or, or X, Y, Z, U. Okay, so you save capital Y, capital X, capital Z, like that. These are uppercase right here. And what they are is the order, that's the order you want the camera to be in. You want the court, you want it to rotate over the Y, then over the X, and then over the Z. So in other words, if you put this thing into 
right into the program, right above all the uh, all the uh, instructions for controlling the camera. It'll do it anywhere down inside the uh, that uh, that render program. It'll do uh, function. will do it for you. So that has to be added in. That's if you're going to have like if you go to the Egyptian thing. If you're going to then you have to then of course you have to tell W what to do. You have to tell W to uh, turn you know in this direction and. Uh, and Z to turn in the other direction. You have to tell that. If you look at the Egyptian program, you'll see that uh, there's a couple of couple of uh, strokes here. I use the arrows for it, so I use the up and down arrow. Except instead of the up and down arrow, I use the W and the Z to do it in the, or in the uh, Egyptian one, because I was I was already using the up arrow to go forward and the other arrow to go backwards, and I was using the right arrow to turn this way and the left arrow to turn that way. So I had already burned up the four arrows. I couldn't use them anymore. So I said, okay, I'll use the W and the Z to tip over. That's, that's the other thing I wanted to do. Uh, when you guys play games, you probably realize that uh, a lot of people use the mouse almost exclusively in the arrows to go forward and backwards. We can do that. There is a program I wrote, actually, which one of the programs I wrote, which uses the mouse. The mouse turns you left, turns you right, so you don't have to use the arrows. And you just go forward with, and backwards with the arrows, forward and backwards. So as you go forward, then you can use the mouse to look, at, look around. And then you can keep going forward, so you use two hands like that. Uh, it is po possible to use the mouse for everything, going backwards and forwards too. You can just simply push it forward and it will go forward, pull it backwards and go backwards. You can go this way and that way. Or you can use the mouse to look up and down and to go look left and right, and then the arrows to go frontwards and backwards. You can choose to do any of those things you want. But mouse control, mouse control has a funny problem. I'm going to explain what happens. When I, when I do the test to find out, like when you're in the Egyptian room, you want to get out, you try to get out of the room, you bump into the wall, you can't get out. Because what it keeps doing is, when you make a little move, it says, are you located beyond the left wall or the right wall, or beyond the back wall or the front wall? If you're outside any of those, it says stay where you were. It doesn't let you do it. The problem is, when you use the mouse to uh, move, like if I move the mouse, use the mouse to move, what happens is, if you take a big sweep, it's going to move a long, long distance. And I can't say just go back to where you were because you'll be back in the middle of the room again. I want you to stop right at the wall. So the problem is with the mouse, you have to figure out how far have you gone before you hit the wall. With the arrow, it's easy. Every arrow brings you a new, new direction. That's why it's so slow. It's really pretty slow. And it gets you up to the final wall and I say, oh, you can't go there. You're too far. So it goes back to where it was. With the mouse, you might start here and mouse, you know, mouse quickly all the way into there, and now you're to the walls back here, and you're way in here. You can't just go back one position because you're still outside. So you got to figure out where back in the building is, and that's pretty tough to do. So I figured rather than write all that code, which which I can do, but I mean, basically, if I wrote it, it's going to look like a bunch of code in there, and I wanted to avoid that. So basically, what I did was I said, okay, if we're going to have walls that are barriers, just use the arrows, and it'll be much easier for you. And I left. All the programs that involve walls like that, like the one, the most recent one would be all the texture on everything. That's got, that's got that kind of control and it just says don't go beyond that wall, don't go beyond this wall, and use the arrows to go back and forth. So the arrows is the easiest way to control which, uh, how far you go. It's much harder with the mouse. Um, anyway, so that right there gets you in the, in the ballpark, but then another thing you've got to remember, here's the room. This is you're in a room here and you're going to use this thing to look up and down like the Egyptian. Well, originally I started the Egyptian guy over here uh, deciding uh, uh, what he was going to do. But when it did the, when it did the, the X, Y, Z, all he, it started turning the things in different directions. I ended up here being outside the wall. I didn't want to do that. I'm not going to explain why. It's just the specific of this program. But basically I say, okay, here's what you should do. You should always locate your guy uh, at the camera radius. If you're going to control uh, this right here, and he's going to have up and down, he's going to have first person view of stuff, then you should always put the person in the middle of the world to start with. That's the best place to start him off. Because then you're sure that he's going to be inside the walls so you don't get locked out of the walls. Because if you do it wrong, you're going to end up being outside looking at black and you're going to wonder why you got out there. It's because of some twist. These things have. They do things that you have to think about. If you get these things and you're moving things around in all different directions, uh, it's, it confounds the, the it confounds what you what you think is going on. So what you do is to keep things absolutely simple. Never let it get away from you. I always say, I know I want to do this, but I know I want to have my character inside that room. So if you put him at zero zero zero, he will be inside the room. 
at the camera, and then he'll be able to look around inside the room. If somehow he gets stuck outside that room, he'll never get in because you can't get through the walls because they're, they're impenetrable. Actually, what will happen is it'll start talking to him saying you'll never escape, but it means you're, you're already outside. So you've got to be careful when you're uh, setting up your uh, this thing right here. It's a little bit weird. Uh, it only, in this case here, it only does it for the camera, though. It doesn't do it for other objects. You can do it for another object, by the way. Well, let me explain what happened in the old days. This is what happened. Just, I'm telling you, old days was like two years ago. What happened was they didn't have this instruction. And people who were writing these games had a hard time figuring out how to make the thing look up and down, the camera, because the camera didn't have an instruction like that. So here's what they did. Really, you guys, you appreciate it. They, what they did is they took the camera and they made a hierarchy. And they made an object which can look up and down. They attached the camera to it. And then they would make the object look up and down. And the camera would be stuck with it and it would go with it. So they, so they didn't have this instruction, but they faked it by attaching it to a thing that did have that instruction. Which was kind of a pain in the neck, I guess. So they decided to go this way. And they finally have an instruction that actually says camera look up and down, which it didn't have before. Okay, so that's that. If you go to the Egyptian program, you can look around, you can see this instruction, and you'll see, and when you use the X and the Y, you'll see how it works. I haven't written it in any place, but it's there. It, okay. Is the Egyptian program on your website? Yeah. Okay. It's, it's the one that's like, uh, I think it's not, not, not last class, but the class before. Okay. I had the, one of the, it's, I changed that program. So it actually had it in it already, but you didn't know, I didn't tell you about the W and the Z. Okay. It was already there. Okay, so that takes care of that. Now, uh, this week what I've done is I've added a video uh, to, to texture. So in other words, what happens now is you have a, uh, instead of just having a texture like a picture on your spheres and squares and all that stuff, you can put a video, an operating video on it. And uh, the, the trick is how do you, what do you have to do to do that, okay? Well, to start off with, uh, what I've done is I've made up some special commands to say create this object which will have a video on it. Okay, they're different than, and there's a list of them online. It's in the uh, today's uh, uh, website. And uh, what it tells you is it tells you what the instructions are to make a, an object have allow it to have a video on it. It looks like this. This is the one for just a plain surface. By the way, we didn't have a plain surface up until last week. Uh, now you can actually create a plain surface. And if you look in the list of commands, you'll see how to create a plain surface. Uh, I have to update all these lists because I keep making things. But basically, uh, you can now say, make, instead of making a cube that's flat, you can make just a simple plane. And you can have the, t the images go from this side to both sides. It can be on both sides. So if you put texture on this side, you can look on the other side and see it also. There's a nice thing to that, nice effect to that. If you put texture on both sides of the object, the same texture, what you can do is, for example, uh, I have one there that's like a fishbowl, and it looks like, uh, I think it looks like this. And, uh, and and it's got fishies riding around doing all their stuff. But if you move the camera inside of that cylinder, and you look out, you're in the fishbowl, and you can look around and see all the fishes all over the place, because the image is coming into the thing as well as out of it. And as well as the image coming out to you, if you go inside, the image goes into you as well, because it's... It's pasting the image on both sides. So basically, you can be inside the fishbowl with fish are all around you going in different directions. And that's kind of a handy thing to have, uh, to have the image on both sides. Uh, so uh, all, all your textures from now on will allow you to put it on both sides of the plane, both sides of the sphere, both sides of those. If you're in a sphere, you can go in the sphere and look out and see everything. If you're inside a cylinder, you can look out and see everything. And just as if you were outside looking at it. So it's like, uh, it's an addition that really has been handy for making interesting stuff. Here's a command for making a, a plane with video in it. I'm going to show you both of them. This is the one with the video in it. Uh, no, it's down after graphics, after you see graphics, you write this right here. I'm going to use this to explain some other things, so I'll, I'll write it down. Script, okay. Make a variable. All the variables right here, my object, those are all uh, these variables here are all of your own names. Whatever you want to call a thing is it. So every object you have, give it a name of some kind. And that's the, the name that you use up when you're rendering the thing. You use that name. That's, you want to make this object move around. Okay? So then you say new. I'm going to explain what all this stuff is now. We've been doing it, but I haven't told you what's going on here. Uh, 
Let's uh, make V plane. There's a, there's a V in there. Make V plane right there. And this is just a simple, I'll make it easy, 20 by 240, comma, uh, river. This is just the name of, uh, that's just the name of a video, that's all it is right here. Okay. Okay, this is what this does. What this does is it creates a plane that's going to be, 320 by 240. It's going to be 320 this way wide, 240 high, okay? That's in its unit space units. And the reason why it's that ratio is because that's the ratio that the films are. They're 4 to 3. Uh, you can use a different ratio. It will take a different ratio, but it will not take one inverted. You can't put 240 here and 320 there. It doesn't like that. Okay, for some reason, the video just stops playing. It refuses to play. So basically, it has to have some sensibility as far as uh, the proportions go. I'm kind of stuck with that. I haven't figured a way around it yet, but maybe I will, but I haven't figured out a way around it yet. Okay, here's what happens. You write this. This thing right here is the name that you choose for your object, whatever it is. And this here is what you, uh, this is what you get. And uh, if I were to go up here and render the thing, it would be like, I would say, I want my object, whatever I call it, whatever I call the thing, dot, and then, this thing right here creates automatically this thing right here, V plane dot uh, position X. Uh, let's see what I got here. Let's see if I got the right thing. Equal zero. Okay. So in other words, you're going to have an X and a Y and a Z. Then you're going to have a rotation X and Y and Z like that. That's what these guys are in. These are in the render routine, right? And uh, here, here, it's rendering. This right here is down, down below. Okay, here's the one thing you got to do that's different than what we were doing before. Now that you have a video, there's two things you have to. One thing is you have to in, you have to bring in the video equipment. You have to bring in the camera and stuff, all the stuff that is the video stuff, which is going to read the images and everything. So what you have to do, way up above in the very beginning, you have to add a new include. This is the include that says I'm going to use video. Uh, to project onto my onto my surfaces, okay. It's always the same. It looks like this: uh, script and uh, there's different ways of writing this, but I'm going to write it the short way: source equals quote uh, js video js. Now, here's what I suggest to you. Either download that thing from my computer into your computer so you can write it like this. And if not, you can write http colon slash slash uh, dotworks.com slash this thing here. You can do it either way. In other words, you can leave it up there and use its entire address, call it up from my, from my, which is probably the best way to do it at this point because I'm still changing this thing. If you download it right now, you're going to get the version we get today, but by next week it's going to be different. So it's going to add new things to it, and you won't get them. So my suggestion is to use the JJ, uh, HTTP colon slash slash uh, dotworks.com slash this thing in the beginning, just for this, this week. Uh, and then next week uh, I'll, you can download this thing and put it in your machine. It will contain all the new stuff. It will all be there. I'll tell you what the new things are, by the way. Uh, there are some, uh, I want to get them all so they use the webcam. So basically what they do now is they'll, they'll all give you videos. You can have videos in all the different shapes you have, but you can't use the webcam. You only use the webcam in the plane. That's the only one that uses it. I don't have a webcam for a sphere or, or a torus or, the, uh, uh, or a cylinder. So I'm going to get the webcam to do what the videos will now do. That will take me a day to get that all done. So the, the, that thing right there will give you everything you want. So you have to have that when you're going to use the video texture. And you have to have one more thing. After you wrote the, the uh, position, 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 uh, rotation, 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 you've got to add this new instruction in here. Let me see if I can find it because it's got to be written exactly like I, uh, I'm using it here. It's called get new frame. And you have to use this thing right here, my object, whatever, whatever you name the thing. 
every single in every single one of these things, suppose you have another object down here that has texture on it, and another one, another one that has video texture. For each one of those, you've got to have one of these things. In other words, after you put down, suppose you have also a sphere. You write all the sphere stuff, then you write this thing in the name of the sphere there. So this thing here has to be added for each one. If you look at the programs I have, you'll see that you see how it works. That there has to be one for each uh, posi po uh, position and rotation. You have to have one of these guys. And here's what all this thing does. Now that you have video, what happens, it's just a texture like any other texture. You just put a texture on something. Usually it just stays here. But this is what's weird about video. As the video plays, another texture keeps coming in. And the question is, how do you get rid how do you change textures? This thing does it for you. What this thing does is it goes up and looks and says, is there a new texture, a new frame from the video? If there is, put that on the texture. No, it just simply monitors the video coming in, and whenever it finds a new image, the next image gets all the way in, it just slaps it on the object, and then you have a new texture on the object. So it looks like the video is projecting onto the object is what it looks like. So that right there makes it go. This right here brings in the, uh, the video that reads the stream of video. And this thing right here just plasters each frame as they come in onto your object. And that's what that does. And that's the and that's pretty much what all there is to it. In other words, you declare it with this thing here. Notice the V in there. That make plane is just will just make you a plane. Make V plane will make you a video plane. So it'll go to the video equipment. And, uh, and, the, and the, there's going to be a make W, which you know. Yeah, we do have that already. There's a make W plane, and what that does is that can that controls a webcam. Well, if there's a V in there, it'll just read a video for you. If there's a W in there, it reads the webcam. And if there's nothing in there, it's just to make plane, it'll just simply make a plane. That's all it does. So in other words, there's three different kinds of instructions. I'm going to list them all out. I have some of them listed out already, but I'll list out the rest of them. So that right there will create a plane for you, which means you'll see something, and you'll be able to look at it from this side and this side, and you'll see the picture, the video running. No matter which side, you can rotate it and see what's behind it. It's all running, okay? So that, that's all there is to adding the video to the thing. It's kind of a s simple. What well, you'd think of it logical. You have a specific call to make, say, I want video on this thing. Uh, you also, by the way, have to have the video. The video is MP, it's MP4. It has to be in your file, folder because that's the picture. So anyways, you, you have to have the video in, in the folder with you. So what you say is uh, when you run this thing right here, that right there is the name of the MP4. That's the name of the video that you're running. And it has to be right there where you can get it. You could use, you can use one online. For example, you could use you could put in HTTP colon slash slash uh, banana republic dot com slash this if it's someplace else. The trouble with that is the only one problem with it is that when the frames come to you, come to your machine, you have to go boom, boom like that, and it's very slow. So your machine will be running bloop, 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 and it might even stop. It might even hang up on you. So it's better to get the things into the site, like if you have Alta Vista site, to upload your your file to that Alta Vista site, the MP4. MP4, there's another thing about it that I should tell you. A regular MP4 is a very dense, it's a, it's a media that you can't run online very easily. You have to, what they do is this. Uh, here's the MP4. It's got one frame after the other like so. And the frames are uh, pretty good size. they got a lot of stuff in them. Okay, this is like the video. And if, if, it's, on, if it's online, it has to read this, replace it with this, replace it with this, replace it with this, and so forth. It has to do all that stuff. It's a lot of work. So what they do is they reduce the size of the things, like so. So then this can download to your machine much quicker. It pulls it down. It gives you a, a less good image. The image is not as good, but it runs fast. At least it runs at a decent rate. And there may be some other shortcuts they use, too. Uh, in fact, let me just tell you now what the most common shortcut is for these things, which is very interesting. If you, supposing you had a sphere here, supposing you have a ball that's moving across the screen. It comes in at this side here. And then it's over here, like so. Then the next frame it's over here, like so. And the next frame it's over here, like so. And the last frame it's over here, going out of sight. So in other words, each frame is making. The, when you see each one of these things, the ball looks like it's moving this way. Okay. Well, if they did that, they would have to produce in your machine the entire of this width in pixels and the entire of this width in pixels. Well, they don't like to do that. So here's what they do. They show you the first one, the whole first thing right here. And then what they do is they look at this frame and they subtract the differences between this one and this one. In other words, anything in this frame that has changed, they will, they will take the original frame and change it. So they look at this and they say, what's different about this one than this one? And they'll make those changes. So in other words, this right here is the only thing they change. The rest of it's all the same. So therefore, the, the machine doesn't have to do all the work of taking the whole frame and reading it all in. 
It just, what it does is the, the videotape itself, the video itself, remembers what the changes are. So in other words, instead of having this on the video, what they have is the original one like that. And then they have a little bit of a little bit of discussion about it, saying, this is what changed, so change that. This is what changed to go to the next one, so change that. This is what changed, so change that. So in other words, for a few of them out, they do that. And then what happens is the noise of calculation becomes so great that the image is going to decay too much. So then what they do is they take a picture of this one and they bring it in. So in other words, what happens is the first one is a full frame. The next one is correct that frame to make it look different. Correct that frame to make it look different. There's the little corrections to make it look like the next frame. And then finally they put a real frame in to get it back to normal again. Then they begin the process again of, of doing calculations. That way they save a huge amount of space because all this stuff here, there's a lot of, lot of bits and like bites in this thing. They get it down to just a few instructions. They just change these colors of this stuff and you're all set. That's if, if the thing is relatively unchanging, like a simple thing, like a person or something moving across the screen, it's actually very cheap to do that. If it's something that everything's changing, it doesn't help you very much. If the entire screen is going all over the place, it could drive you. It won't work very good. <coughs> so uh, that's what they do with these uh, with these uh, <coughs> online online things. They don't show you every frame. They actually show you frames, and then they're uh, they're you know correcting the frame as it goes by. But you don't have to worry about that. It's all behind the scenes. But it's interesting that they do it that way. And it might explain to you one thing: is that when you have an MP4. Uh, you have a pretty big, it's a lot of frame there. And so uh, it is a JPEG. It's already, that's already been done to it, by the way. They've already, each frame doesn't look like a frame. But what they do is <coughs> they make it smaller. And by making it smaller, it makes it more compact. Therefore, they can transmit it faster. And that's the idea is when you're online, you want to transmit those things pretty fast. You don't want to get a big image and have it go. It shows you the things start to move, and then it goes like this, and then it goes like that, and then it goes like this. And pretty soon you realize the whole thing's going to be no good. So uh, there are programs that allow you, to, here's what they allow you to do. You take an MP4 and you say, make this for online, make this for a web. And what they'll do is they'll take the thing that you have and they'll make it in a web format, which means it'll look smaller and crappier, but it will run in real time. And that's what you want. Okay, so that's one of the things that you, if you get into video stuff a lot, you'll have to do that. If you download uh, from the internet, from, uh, uh, from uh, uh, YouTube, for example, you have to be really careful you don't take HD. I, I, yeah, because if you take an HD, uh, our system won't run it. It, it. it doesn't like it. So what you have to do is run it through some program like Director and say change this into a regular MP4. So some formats it won't take. The only thing we can take is MP4, which is kind of the standard. And that's that only video texture for any of your uh, programs. Let me, uh, this, this is, I'm just reading off the sheet here, but there are... Uh, I put, I put in, I'll put all the rest of them up, but there's some here, and I just want to do one more here. Uh, suppose you wanted to make a, uh, a sphere with a radius of 2. Here's what you'd write. <clears throat> Again, this stuff, that stuff's all the same. That would be the same with the spherical lot, whatever you called it, would be there. And then that would be all with it, what the sphere is. I think I called it... Uh, blah, 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 blah. Oh, I'm going to wait to tell you. I think I called it V-sphere. V-sphere is what I called it there. Anyway, so uh, let me uh, do this here. Here, uh, my object. I'm making a sphere. Equals new. And uh, I'm gonna say it's uh, oops, make sphere. I think it is. Uh, make the plane. Oh wait, this is the wrong one here. See, I screw this whole thing up here. Uh, I'm gonna have to make some changes even. That's why I say don't, don't, don't copy this thing because it's gonna have to be changed a little bit to work. Everything to work right. Uh, 320, 240 is the image size of the video.
sphere. Uh, make V sphere, the theory of how you make a sphere. <clears throat> and V sphere is the name of the object. But here's the thing. These numbers right here, are, are the, it's, all this is is a function. It says call this function right here and send these variables to it. That's all we're really doing is we're sending a bunch of variables to a function. And this is the function right here. So we're sending uh, the radius is the first thing you guess the radius. And then these things right here, these are simply, when you make a, when you make a sphere, it's got a bunch of these guys. And then it has a bunch of these guys. These are the structural things that hold the sphere. It has 32 of these the latitudes and 32 longitudinal lines. That's all it does. <clears throat> the more those you use, the more refined the sphere is. It doesn't look like it has little flat surfaces. And the slower it, it, may, it makes it, though. So in other words, it's speed against how, how nice it looks is what the problem is. 32 is about right. Anything 32, 64, any of those are okay. If you get up into 1,000, you're in trouble. The thing will, it'll make a sphere. The next sphere. It's going to be very slow. So you want to just get about, these numbers are about right. <coughs> this, is the, this is the width and the height of the video that's being projected onto it, and this is the name of the video. So those things are the, are the uh, parameters you have to send with this particular sphere. Now, there's something I want to tell you about. See this thing right here, this new thing, that's new. Normally what we would say if we were using a function, we'd simply say, uh, my object equals whatever this function gives me back. Okay, we would say do that. But now I get this word new in here, that's a weird idea. Let me tell you what new does for you. I'm not going to give you the technology behind it, but I'm going to tell you the, the basics. When you say new, it means I have a function out here someplace that will invent a new function for every time you call it. It will make a brand new function specific to that object. So when I say my object is this, send it that information, it will make a function called make v sphere specific to this object. And I can use it again. I can call it again with a different object name. It will it'll create a new function completely which looks for this object's name in it, rather than this one's one. So in other words, what it does is, it actually creates a whole function. This create not only is a function, but it creates this function specifically to this guy here. And it has the function out there in a very general form. And it says, I have this general form out here. And if I say, my object equals new that, it says, take the general form and give that to me specifically. So all my positions and all that stuff will all be local to my, to my object. And then if you do it again for uh, my object 2, it will create another one of these guys whose name then is my object 2, and then all of its heights and widths and everything will be specific to that object. So if this isn't just calling a function, this is actually creating a function for this guy right here, and it, which is kind of an interesting thing. We haven't talked about it because it's actually computer east and it's not worth getting into. But you can appreciate the idea of it. Originally we say, uh, you know, call a function, and it would call a function, it would do the stuff in the function and give you the answer, or do something. Now we're saying, not only call a function, we create a brand new function that will store all these funny numbers I'm sending up here, so it will know this is my object, and this is my object's information. And if I call a different one, it will create a new one of these guys with a different variation name for this guy. And the, and the variation name, by the way, is uh, this thing right here. This will be the name of the first one, and obj2 would be the name of the second one. Whatever you call it, it would be the second one. So each one of these guys would change, and they would remember where they were. In other words, remember what position am I in, what rotation am I in, because you specifically make that function create the effects just for that, just for that object. Okay, uh, but it's all behind the scenes. We don't have to worry about it. And so there it is. If you want to create ten objects, you can do it. If you want to create ten objects with videos on them, you can do it. In fact, if you look online, I'm going to go there in a second. I'll show you the programs that I've gotten so far, <clears throat> and. Uh, the ones that I put up, and, and I'll show you what, how they work, how, what they look like, so you'll see how these things work in real life, okay? Uh, another thing I have to mention to you, if you're in a really bad place where you can't get, uh, you know, you don't have high speed, the thing is, bring it down very low speed, you're going to have trouble with texture kind of things, because it, they, when the thing first opens, it stalls a little bit while it tries to get everything together, and then it finally stops running. If you're in a very slow place, it's going to stall and it's going to give you all kinds of hard time. But if you're at university, easy. If you're at home with a, if you've got a cable, easy. Or if you've got a DSL. But if you don't have that stuff, if you're using a modem or some weird thing, telephone, the telephones don't work either. The trouble with them is we're creating images that are too big for the image of the phone. So therefore, it doesn't know what to do with this stuff. I'd have to explicitly say this is for an iPhone, or, or this is, you know, I have to explicitly say cut off all the extras. And, and that's just a little bit of work for me to do with these programs. So I say, okay, don't use them on your cell phone. They're not going to work. 
Or they won't work well. Some will work, but they won't work very well. And that's the problem with it. Let me get this down here and uh, we'll take a look at what we've got. You got any questions? Ask them to me because this is a this is a 3D video day. I don't know if there's any limit to the number of videos you can put on. I'm not sure. Uh, I put uh, six of them up on one of our programs and it runs fine at, at a good location. I don't know how it would run you know, everywhere, but it runs fine at a good location. So if I look at these programs here, let's uh, look at one of them. Uh, of course, I've got to get more on there. Let me just get the uh, program right. Oh yeah, nice, nice start. Oh, that's not going on. Sorry. Oh yeah, this one. This is webcam, sorry, I picked the wrong one. Uh, I should remind you of this. this, I just did but I should I hit the wrong one. Uh, you cannot run webcams on, in Chrome, they won't run. So you have to run it in Firefox, okay? That one program, all the ones that I give you that have webcam on them, you're gonna have to run in Firefox. Or you can run them in your own machine. If you download it in your machine, it'll run fine. But if you try to run them online, they won't run because uh, Chrome has a, craziness going on. Okay, that's the webcam one. I didn't want to do that one. I wanted to do this one here. Try this right here. Okay, there it is. I can get it up here. Uh, it is the image, and uh, I'm using the arrows to rotate it. See, it's just a plane. All it is is a plane with a, a texture uh, a video texture slap onto it. That's all it is. And that's just a, a, a video image I got off the off. screen. By the way, those are people over there in the upper standing around there. Uh, they must be, uh, you, if you fell over that thing, you'd be bye bye. They're all watching your dogs and everything, I suppose. But that's it. That's all this does. This simply produces a plane and puts a video on it, okay? Let me just take a look at what, it, uh, what the program looks like here. You know, this is the whole program, and uh, here's, here's what it has in it. The first thing it has to have, in order to run, it has to have this line here that says jsvideo.js. Okay. Now, as I say, this is running in my own, uh, you know, my own uh, site, so therefore it has that program in it. If you wanted to put this in your in your computer, you can do it. Bring it up to Alta Vista. You can do it if you want to. If you don't want to worry about it, you can just put uh, http colon uh, dot works dot com slash this and it you can it'll use the one off my site all the time. That's the easiest way to do it. If you want to have this in your own site, you should probably wait a couple of weeks until it's finalized. And then when you download it, it'll stay in that condition. It won't change anymore. But I have to add the I have to add the uh, webcams to it. I have to add that stuff to it. It does video does the videos now, but it won't do the webcams. Uh, here right here is the render function. And notice right here it says get new frame and it says my plane. Because my plane is what I'm shoot, uh, what I'm putting up there, and notice it says V plane right here. V plane means this is a video plane, and the reason where I got this was from this guy right down here at the bottom. This guy right here. <clears throat> I created my plane, and I made make V plane, and I sent it the, uh, the dimensions of the plane, which are also the dimensions of the video, by the way, not accidentally. And uh, as long as it's four to three, it'll work. Uh, then I sent it the name of the uh, video itself. So in other words, this thing right here is very simple too. You say make V-plane and you can send out the dimensions of the video or the dimensions of the rectangle and then send it the name of the picture and it goes. That works very easily. So in other words, there's nothing to it. The only thing you're going to do is remember to put this in so that what it does is it keeps grabbing the new frame and putting it up there because you've got to have that, okay? 
And the next thing is, uh, let's do the next program here. Six of them, six sides of the box, and that's all there is to it. Up here, in this location, what I do is I locate the side, I create these six different uh, rectangles, and I put them in position so they form the, the box. <clears throat> and then I say, get new frame uh, to uh, uh, repeat this one, repeat this one, repeat this one, and what do I got here? Yeah, I got six of them. I got one, two, three, four, five, six. The six sides and six orientations and everything have to be done. And notice each one of these has its get new frame for the roof, get new frame for the floor, get new frame for the plane. And these are the names, these right here are the names that I gave them when I defined them in this position right here. These two right here are the ones you get new frame. Get new frame for my roof is because my roof is this right here. Therefore, when I say get new frame, that's what I'm doing here. And then my roof over here is the same. Make that rectangle one of the my roof objects, okay? <clears throat> it is the my roof object. So, that, that takes care of that, and that's how it works. And on top, by the way, I forgot to say this, but this has to be added in right here. That's the video controls. That, that says put a video on the thing, okay? Assemble. Uh, oh, what do I do now? Can't get back. cylinder right here. Cylinder is like trees blowing in the forest. <clears throat> if I back up, if I back up out of the cylinder, you can see it's just a cylinder. I made the top uh, smaller than the, than the bottom. Simply because when you're in there, if you leave it like that, the top texture is kind of ugly. It's just the top of the thing. It's kind of ugly. So I did is I tilted it in and, it, and when it does it went out of sight from the, from the guy watching. So when you go inside there and you look around, you see, you can't see the top anymore. But you can see the bottom a little bit. See how it's a little bit wiggly down there? That's because you've seen the, the bottom of the cylinder, and it, uh, it's got this, uh, it doesn't texture very well. Uh, there's two ways of doing a cylinder with texture. One way is you can just do a cylinder. Don't do the top, don't do the bottom. It would just be a, a tube, basically. Uh, I chose to put a top and bottom because a lot of times you may want to have a full cylinder, so I gave it that. Uh, I'll probably next semester I'll make an uh, option so you can put it up there or not. But this one, we're kind of stuck on the top and bottom. And that's the reason why any texture gets distorted on those two, it's almost tremendous. If, if you do it independently, you don't do it intentionally by saying this, this, this cylinder has a top and bottom. You can put one on yourself, you can put a circle on top and bottom and make it as good as you want. But it's just a lot more work. And I said, okay, we won't do that this, this semester, we'll get out of it. We'll just let it do whatever it does. Uh, let's look at... Uh, these are the directions here. 
which are, are good. They tell you, they're going to tell you what all the different uh, parts of the call, what the elements are of the calls. This isn't done yet, so I wouldn't use this right away. I'll use it later when, when it's finished. It's not completed yet. But it will contain all the instructions on how to do everything. Uh, this is sphere right here. And if you go into the sphere, again, you're in the world of the sphere now. And uh, use the arrows. I think the arrows. Uh, it doesn't mean anything to use. It doesn't use either one. There it goes. The arrows control it, yes. So you're inside the sphere, and you can sort of see that you can get inside of a world that's completely surrounding you, that the world's outside and you're in. I, uh, I brought in a, uh, I experimented with a, a Chinese game where you're inside and you can look all around and everything. But then I got, so I get suspicious. These guys, you know, they always drop little things in on you. So I said, okay, I don't know if this, this, this video is pure or not or whether it's got something in it. <clears throat> so I, I decided to get rid of it. But uh, you can actually have 3D worlds that you can look around in. It's quite cool. This sphere gives you the ability to look all around. You can look at any, side, any part you want. And if you were in a 3D world being projected onto that, you could look around. And you could move in it, and it would, it would actually work out for you. Uh, but uh, can't, do it, can't do it today. Um, here's, a, here's a torus. This is weird. This is a, a donut. Okay? And if you go into the donut, if I go into the donut, that's interesting. Now, if I go in the donut, you can see, once I get in the donut here someplace, okay, when the donut spins and I'm inside of it, you can see that you're inside the donut, and you can actually go inside here and you can look around. Let me go to, uh, see what's sphere. Let me go to the, we took the cylinder, and we went inside the sphere. So this is the same thing. Just basically a lot, you can go inside the thing, and you can put those things surrounding you. So in other words, the nice thing about <clears throat> having this, being able to print the image on both sides. You can print it on the outside, and you can look at it like that if you want to, or you can create your world so that you're inside, and you actually have this dynamic world you're inside of, doing things around you. The fish is swimming around you or whatever. Uh, it doesn't work as well the donut as it does on other things, so I'm not going to deal with it here. But there it is. That's the idea. And the torus, to make the torus work, it's the same as the other, other object. Let me just bring it up. How you do it. This is it here. You have to have uh, JS video just like you did because it's a video projecting onto it. Uh, you have to have get new frame nut because the torus is called nut here in this particular thing. And V donut is the is the actual technical name for the torus. Here it is. Nut equals video torus. It says video torus is the name of it. Then you put in the what you put in is the diameter of the whole donut. And then you put in the diameter of the tube that comprises the donut. That's the tube. Now, it's not the outer diameter and the inner diameter of the donut. It's the diameter of the donut and then the diameter, of, I'm sorry, the radius of the two. Radius of the donut, radius of the two. And then it's got 50 and 50. Those are the number of stripes it has in both directions, just the structure of the thing. And finally, 32240 is the uh, video pr proportions, which is usually 4 to, four to 3, and that's it. Then that's the name of the video itself. And that's all you have to do. There isn't any more to it. So basically, you can now put texture, dynamic uh, videos onto your objects, no matter what they are, and it will, it will actually uh, produce a dynamic effect for you. Uh, I'll probably make a few more Q ones just to have some, something that you copy from, but uh, that'll, be, that'll be it pretty much. Are there any questions about any of that stuff? Any of that stuff you think you might have trouble with or problem with or anything? No? Stunned, me, you're stunned, stunned by the. Uh, does it all make does it all make sense? I mean, is there anything about that you can you can copy anything that's there? Programs are there. Uh, I'm going to add the the webcam part to it. That isn't very big, but there's some other things I have to tell you too. But uh, basically, the webcam part is coming next next after you get back from Thanksgiving, and I'm not going to spend the day on it. I'm just going to show it to you a couple of seconds so you see how it works. The only difference in the webcam and the video is where you see a V in the video 
calls. You just put a W in there for webcam call, that's all. And you can't call it from Chrome. You have to call it from uh, you know, Firefox. Firefox. And that's pretty much it. Uh, we're actually at the end of the course, uh, virtually, and what I'm going to do now is just review things, and I'm going to start not just reviewing the course, but I'm going to go into the 3D stuff. I'm going to put things together with our regular websites. My, my hope is that eventually if you make a website someplace, if you want to put a little 3D thing in it, you can incorporate it into it. So you'll be able to use the best of both worlds, the, the website, regular HTML stuff and JavaScript stuff, and then this 3JS stuff uh, popped into it for special effects or whatever. Uh, I like the idea, you know, people are crazy about games. And one of the things about it that I think that attracts people is because you're actually the, the person in there and you, you get the control of moving around and going forward looking at stuff and doing whatever you're doing, shooting stuff or whatever. But I think that I think that being into it, you're uh, s suspending uh, disbelief and going into this thing is actually what gives you the entertainment of, of it. And I have a suspicion that people at web pages haven't found that yet. That hasn't occurred to, to them yet. And eventually, uh, web pages are going to do the same thing. They're going to allow the person watching the web page to go in, look around, look at the cost of something, the price. By the way, I have a student from last semester. This is interesting. He he went into business after he finished this course. I couldn't believe it. And what his business is, he, uh, he uh, goes to stores around the Anchorage area, and he takes videos of the stores. And what he does is you can go in and visit the stores, and you can see stuff. And if you want to buy it, you press on it, and it will put the thing upside for you, and you can actually buy it from walking around in there. He got the software somewhere else. I don't know where he got it. But the concept was already clear in his mind what he wanted to do, and he found somebody that did it. So there are, uh, there are potential things happening. They aren't ready yet, though. I, I looked at the thing that he did. Uh, I think the problem is a lot of stores are kind of cluttered. They're trying to, you know, sell you stuff. They're trying to get you all kinds of stuff around you, so you're constantly under barrage of uh, buying something. And the trouble with that is, when you're in a 3D world, you're walking around, the stuff is all around you, it's too cluttered. I think it has to be pushed back from you somehow. And I think you have to have time to, because you have to focus on what it is. It's not like being in a room which you're very familiar with and noticing stuff all around you. It's like going into this cacophony of of light and sound, and you're trying to figure out what is where, you don't know because it's just disorienting. So I think that in the end, uh, if, if these things are going to have to be made larger. I've made these a little bit small in most cases. Uh, the rooms with all the texture on them, I made them smaller because we're looking at them. But I can see that you can make a cylinder, for example, and you can make the cylinder, instead of making it five, which I'm making, you can make it 50. You can make it as big as you want. And the scene would be out there in the distance. So that's, that's what you kind of might want. And the computer doesn't care. It has no feelings for how big you make it anyway. It's just a matter of how the person in there gets a sense of proportion about how big it is. So I think in the end, there's a lot of things you can do that, uh, to make this thing uh, usable uh, that you know we're not doing here yet, but uh, maybe down the road we will. Uh, I, if you have any interest in the stuff at all, I strongly advise you to, uh, it'll be the same email, the same uh, web, web address. What I do is every semester I take the current web address and I change it to its actual time name. So for example, this one will become uh, .works.com slash CS101 underscore fall underscore 2016.html. In other words, I'll change I'll add the fall underscore uh, 2016. So therefore, that'll be still online, but it'll be at that address. The current one will be CS101.html, in which case, that's next semester's. And I really don't care if you fall along. I think it's kind of fun. And you can see how this thing keeps developing. If you make any suggestions, which people do every semester, they give me suggestions on how to change this course. Some of them I take, and I try them, and others I don't. Some because I, I, I can see that it just, it's got other problems associated with it. But a lot of the stuff you see, the way it's, the way it's arranged here, is from previous classes. They've actually said, I'd like to see this, I'd like to see that, and whatever. And it kind of looks that way. Uh, I, and so I, I'm sort of varying it based on what students uh, that find appealing and what they want to do. But uh, hopefully this thing will last a long time and you'll be able to uh, look at newer renditions of it and, and you know how to download it and you know how to get everything. So if there's something new, in this, this operation of graphics, for example, graphics is going to have a lot more power next semester. It's going to be able to, you'll be able to turn the lighting on and off. You'll be able to do different things, which you can't do now. 
But that one graphics thing will give you all the, all the power. The new version of it will give you all the power you need to do stuff. Uh, I think, uh, in fact, you don't even have to change graphics. It'll, it'll work the same way. It accesses the new versions. And it won't break anything that you have now. Anything you have now will still work. It'll just add new stuff to it. And I guess, uh, I guess that's about it. You've got a project going on. Uh, I've had about well, four people who have had their projects in already. They were okay. They weren't bad. Um, it, 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 it's not a very hard thing to do. I just basically want to see if you know how to do some of the instructions. I, I should remind you of this now that I'm online, that you can actually be in this course and never take the final. You know that, don't you? But you have to get perfect everything. If you get a perfect everything, you get 80 points. In other words, if all your homeworks are perfect exactly and your project is perfect exactly, you get 80 points and you never have to take the final. The school doesn't like that too much, so I might have to change that next semester. So you guys are probably the last ones through that door. Uh, but there it is. Uh, that's uh, that's about it for today. I'll be here for the next half hour. Good point. Okay. Get your projects done. <laughs>